Cowboy went riding out one dark and windy day. They said, son, if you stop eating boneless wings, you won't be. I can't say that line anymore, cause I'll get canceled. And you won't hear shit from me. You little bars, ladies and gentlemen. Bars, okay? Welcome. Welcome to Wednesday. And you know what we get? We get weird on a Wednesday. Oh, yeah. We're going to do fucking Molly. We're going to do all the drugs. Acid, cocaine, heroin, uh, mushrooms, uh, marijuana, uh, whatever we got. All right. We're going to get so fucking weird. Have the craziest panic attack, attack of all time. Think that they're dropping nukes on us. It's going to be a good uh, gay old time. Shit canceled again ladies and gentlemen welcome listen welcome all right if you weren't listening before now you are you got no choice we are tuned in all right let's start the show it's a mind fucking here because you're like evan we already started it okay it just started for me all right it just started for me um what is today wednesday and we're getting weird on a wednesday you know how else is getting weird we weren't even going to start this one till later, but I just want to open with it because I just saw it. I want to talk about it. It's a current event, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> happening in this great state of Texas. Here's the thing that people think. They think that because I live here now that I won't talk shit about Texas. Listen, I'll talk shit about my fucking dog. And if I'm willing to talk shit about Beowulf, if I'm willing to talk shit about Beowulf, there's nothing stopping me from going in on you hoes. <laughs> Listen, we're still figuring these out. All right? Though that was meant to represent open shut case. A lady, a Texas lady in El Paso, decided this, this is the title of the article, a woman jumps into zoo's monkey enclosure to feed them, you're probably thinking bananas, maybe some fruits, maybe she's with PETA, hot Cheetos, choose your fighter, listen, the El Paso Zoo director says a woman put herself and the monkeys in danger. Definitely their taste buds. Listen, you start eating some hot Cheetos, you can't stop. You can't stop. It, things have been put into motion that must go until it's been completed. It turns into, if listen, if you start having a hot batch of hot flame and Cheetos, once you have one, it's like starting the wick on a dynamite stick. Okay, because you have to keep eating them or the fire sets in complete, completely. Had a stroke mid-sentence. Keep it moving, okay? It's like being on an iceberg and it's slowly melting. You're like, well, I'm going to have to deal with this problem, but not yet. So you got to eat the whole bag of Cheetos. So I could see this, and it was flaming hot Cheetos, okay? Those are the extra hot ones. The zoo director says, it's extremely dangerous. I mean, these primates we're talking about here. I mean, these are primates we're talking about here. So they can do something substantial damage to you. Okay, I thought I thought we were talking about the flaming Hot Cheetos. Okay, I misread the whole situation. I thought that, of course, they can eat Hot Cheetos. All right, they eat their own shit. What is flaming Hot Cheetos going to do to something that eats its own shit for a hot meal? Okay, you just double dip. Listen, it's the most resourceful recycling thing I've ever seen. We should adopt that from the animal kingdom. Rinse and repeat the whole circle of life. All right. They don't waste anything. Some people like to leave food on the plate. Not only do they eat everything off the plate, they go back for a second time a day later. 
and re-eat everything that was on that plate just to make sure they're getting it all. Back to the article. They can do some substantial damage to you. They have large canines. They're stronger than they look. Fuck yeah, monkeys are stronger than they look. They may be small monkeys, but they are extremely strong. They can take you to the ground if they wanted to. Ooh, good old-fashioned ground and pound. Take you to the ground, get weird with you. Listen, you bust into a monkey exhibit, think you can feed a bunch of monkeys some hot Cheetos, they take you to the ground. Oh, you're in the animal kingdom now. They get weird with you. That's between you and them monkeys. Back to the article. In a video posted to Instagram, a woman police identify as Lucy Ray. Ah, fucked up now, Lucy. Is seen in the El Paso Zoo spider monkey enclosure offering the animals hot Cheetos. Let's play this video. Okay. She's underneath the waterfall. And they're just taking the Cheetos. They are all about it. Why? Why would you ever do this? And this is the part I was talking about. These monkeys have a specialized diet. Feeding them things outside that could give them animals stomach aches and other bowel disruptions. You know what? Fuck these monkeys. All right? We feed zoo animals better than we feed our own people. Why don't we put people on these strict specialized diets? All right? Hot flaming Cheetos shouldn't even be a thing. Just like boneless wings. They're an abomination to our culture. All right? Our species. Once we open the gate for boneless wings, that's when COVID happened. Okay? There might actually be links between COVID and boneless wings. And here's why. You ever seen a bat wing? <sighs> Not very many bones in that thing. All right? Maybe a stick, if that. All right? And here's probably what happened, the origins of COVID. There probably was someone deep in a forest, just deep in there, scurrying around looking for food and things. And someone just goes up there. Hey, that looks pretty good up there. Well, what do you think that is? I think it's a boneless wing. No, I can't. Be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a boneless wing. People in the United States eat them a lot. Oh my God. But well, we need to get that goddamn boneless wing from that back. What could possibly go wrong? Everything. Everything, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, patient zero ate a bat wing, thinking it was a boneless wing. And here we are a fucking year later. All because you fucking people pushed boneless wings on our economy. Everybody who's tagged me in boneless wing memes. Okay, you guys think it's a goddamn joke? I'm trying to take care of the <laughs> backbone of our society. Okay, just me. And The Rock with his workout videos. Okay, we're the only two people out here rocking it in the free world trying to bring us to the next level. But we can't go to the next level until we leave some things behind. And boneless wings is one of them. You guys think it's a joke. Listen, have you ever seen a boneless wing and COVID in the same room? <laughs> Test your might. Listen. There's something here. I haven't figured it out completely, but there's something here. Let's get back to this story. Yeah, you're getting it now. Listen. First of all, a couple questions about this story. 
the woman going into the zoo enclosure, the zoo monkeys enclosure. And you know what? I think I need to have uh, Lauren back on the podcast if she'll grace us with her presence again, because I have new questions about uh, the animal kingdom and these kind of things, because here's something that I didn't necessarily know about Texas. I know there's a lot of exotic animal loss and liberty with exotic animals, but with that <clears throat> comes animal abuse. And uh, as an animal lover myself, not in a weird way, just an animal lover. I, I don't like to think, see things that are helpless be taken advantage of, okay? Um, and the overall life of some of these exotic animals that live in these zoos, quote unquote, quote unquote, okay? Keep up. Now, I just have questions about these zoos because I've, I've driven through El Paso, okay? If a monkey found itself in El Paso, it'd be like, I'm in goddamn purgatory right now. That's what it would think. Purgatory. Because no monkey should exist outside of their natural habitat. You know what I'm saying? You at least have to recreate that for them, I feel. From temperature, surroundings, if you're going to give it some quality of life, you know? That's why... Some of these bigger zoos, like when I would go to the San Diego Zoo or the Wild Animal Park, be bigger enclosures and uh, more of their natural habitat. You have real specialists and educated people who care about the animals, taking care of them, uh, like Lauren Aries. Uh, I, I don't know what zoo she works at, but I know she's a professional. She cares about animals uh, so much, but... I wonder about some of these places and it's been brought to the light of me after it's been brought to the light of me. What does that fucking even mean? Anyway. It's been brought to my attention that some of these places aren't completely above board. All right. Um, and that was something that was something even in California. There's this place called the Aquarium of the Pacific, Long Beach, California. Shout out LBZ. I remember they had this special event where they had a fucking snow fox. And I was so excited to see the snow fox. Don't ask me why, I just was. And we're driving down there. And as you're getting like within the last couple miles of getting there, you start seeing all the signs on the freeway for the snow fox. And there's like this majestic little snow fox. It's just fucking, it's the fucking Antonio Banderas of the snow fox world. This snow fox got so much pussy wherever it was, you know, it was just stoic, okay? It probably had a little guitar and played uh, Your Body's a Wonderland by John Mayer, you know, and it could just, it had to carry extra towels around for the people listening to it play music, if you know what I mean. And it was just majestic. All these cool pictures of it in the snow on top of a goddamn snow mountain, hiding, scurrying off, like tons of different action shots of this thing and i am so pumped i'm like fuck it, it's an it's a you know it's 97 degrees outside but i should have brought a winter coat for whatever exhibit they have it and because obviously this is going to be insane it's a snow fox i get there and i'm like yeah these fish are cool but take me to the goddamn snow fox i get in there okay Looking at the fish, I finally make my way. I ask them, where's the goddamn snow fox? I say it more polite than that. I'm like, where's the <laughs> fox? Okay. They say, oh, it's outside. I'm like, well, that's a weird flex. How are you going to keep all that ice frozen? I get up to the enclosure. It's basically in the, the, the cage of like a barnyard animal. Okay. It's literally sleeping on hay inside of a dog house. And all I can see is one little white goddamn ear, okay? I cannot confirm or deny if that was a, a, a Shih Tzu, if that was a Maltese, or just your common street mutt that happened to be white. If it was that, it's a good hustle. You just tell them you got a snow fox, only let them see the ear, okay? It could have been a goddamn stuffed animal for all I know. But I remember looking at it 
and I could feel its energy. And I was like, not in a weird crystal way, but I could just feel it was the whole everything. It's just like this thing is not happy right now. Okay. This thing is not in its natural habitat. And I was like, and we, it's not okay. You can't do that. And that's like the weird thing with, you know, wild animals and shit like that, especially like in these enclosures, just feels odd, you know? Even when I see a husky in California and I can tell that thing's fucking sweating its ass off, I feel bad for it. I'm just like, dude, you are not supposed to be here right now, okay? I'm gonna tell you a story. When I was a little kid, I got crabs, all right? Listen, I got crabs. Crab crabs. And I know what you're thinking. Sexual crabs. Nah, not when I was a little kid. I had pet crabs, okay? And I'm ashamed of it, okay? Listen, I'm not really. I could give two shits. I was a little kid, all right? I'm not the same person. Don't try to cancel me for the crabs that I caught in the past, all right? Um, but when I was a little kid, I took a crab from Carpinteria, brought it home, put it in a goddamn aquarium. Now, I love this crab, okay? And I did everything I could to take care of this crab, all right? I had uh, I had the intentions of feeding it whatever it ate. I took a bunch of the, the algae and everything that it would eat in the uh, tide pool. Uh, I brought a bunch of its water home. I got sand from the beach to actually, like, I went there with a plan, okay? You know, when, like, people kill people in a, in a heat of passion, but then there's, like, times where they plan it. It's premeditated. This was a premeditated crab uh, snatching, if you will, okay? I was a crab smuggler, and I'm ashamed of it, okay? But listen, I did everything I could to give it a good home. I would even go into the room a few times a day, and I would swoosh the aquarium around to simulate the tide, all right? And I'd move things around, give it, and this crab, it was doing okay, all right? I had this crab for probably a couple months. I left, I kept it alive that long, but I could tell something was wrong with it, okay? I could tell that it just didn't feel like a normal crab, and it probably wondered if it even was a crab anymore, all right? Because it was just like, what is this? I used to live in the ocean, used to have the beach, and birds I would have to fight against, and you think, yeah, that's cool, they don't have any enemies, but they also ain't got no purpose, no fulfillment in life. So what did I do? A couple months later, I took that goddamn crab home, okay? My parents said, hey, we're going to go to Carpinteria. We're going to camp for the weekend. Say no more, fam. Actually, say a little bit more because I need to know when. And I said my goodbyes to this crab. I brought it to the beach the first day we get there. And it was almost like I, it, it knew, but it was almost near the end of the fight. I think it was depressed and I just felt bad. And I brought it to the ocean. I said, I'll see you when I see you, pal. And I put it down there. And it fucking walked away into the ocean. Happy ending. Okay. And I'll be honest with you. It probably was a little weak. So it probably got picked up by a fish immediately. But I did my part. Oh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the next segment. Because we haven't figured out how to do transitions yet. Oh, yeah, baby. Listen, we're going to talk about something else. Enough of that shit. Enough of that. Another thing that happened in Texas. Let's talk about real quick before we finish on the animal thing. What is wrong with people? What is wrong with people to climb into a monkey enclosure? Just the mindset. Like, this is the thing when people start talking about What's wrong with these people? Like, how do we stop these people? I feel like it's too late for these people. And what do you mean these people, Levin? The people that you're seeing doing all this stupid shit in public and just having zero self-awareness, it's done for them. They're too old. Someone like that has already probably been through so much fucked up shit in their life to where they're already set in their ways from when they were a little kid. That's when it started, Okay. If you're, if you're a grown-ass adult sneaking into a monkey cage, can't be my friend, pal. But here's also the other thing. There's no real helping you because you're going to find a way. It was fine. I just want to feed it, whatever, YOLO. That's the dumbest shit. Listen, 
I just wanted to, like, feed the monkey, and it just, I don't know, like, they just were fucking hungry, and I had, like, these extra hot Cheetos, and I wasn't gonna eat them all by myself, so I was like, let me just feed this little fucking monkey, and let me just get a fucking TikTok in here, and it's just gonna be fine, it's gonna be so fucking cool, and it's gonna be a flex, and say no more, fam, all right? That's probably the conversation that went on, to be honest with you. It, the mindset of someone who does that, who thinks it's cool just to climb in a monkey enclosure. We, this isn't even, the problem is that I always think of stuff like this, like when weird shit happens, anything that's serious, that's so out of the ordinary and it's just like shocking to people, whether it's, you know, something as intense as school shooting or something as just trivial, dope word usage. Trivial. As as getting into a monkey enclosure. Different sides of the spectrum, but it's all just a symptom of what that person learned when they were a kid. And how they never corrected it growing up. And I think that's where a lot of shit stems from is just when you're a little kid, you're not taught all this stuff. Whether it was lazy parents or people who weren't supposed to have kids yet and they did and they just didn't have the time they're already dealing with their own shit to raise the kid properly the school systems like it's just so much stuff when society starts getting out of this weird shit of us as a whole and we start like dividing and everything and we don't really look at like culture as a whole and i mean that from the sense of like if we're not looking out for everybody if we're not looking at our entire existence as we're all in this together we start getting divisive and we stop we start alienating people and then we get all these weird branches of people that just like fester out of it and i think you get stuff like this when you don't when you get too far from reality and don't don't let me lose you here okay don't let me lose you here because i'm starting to lose myself if i'm being honest I think that the farther we get from reality with, you know, uh, ideology, take a fucking shot every time I've ever said ideology on this podcast, whenever we get too far away from like reality and we start dividing and we start having all these word police and all this stuff and it creates an artificial world, we're creating such a problem for the future. Because I feel like we start telling, putting limitations and p confining people, and then you get weird resentment. And then when they get older, they completely break out against it. That's just how I feel about it. But moving on to another Texas thing. It's kind of a big deal here in Texas. It's kind of a, some people have been talking about Texas just legalized uh, constitutional carry, uh, carry. Let me pull up this article. Listen to some music while I do it. Oh, yeah. Pulling up an article. Now, listen. I haven't looked through the actual uh, bill to see exactly what it entails. But it looks like, uh, you know, Governor Abbott, he said he would sign the permitless carry proposal into law. He said we should have constitutional carry in Texas. It is, he says, this is a simple restoration of Texans constitutional rights under the Second Amendment, a right of the people to keep and bear arms. Now, this is something that uh, can be looked at as a good and a bad thing because it's true that, you know, at, at least in the past, you know, when the Constitution was, uh, was created, the right to bear arms, it kind of was normal life. It kind of was people were walking around with weapons. There was, you know, I'm reading this book right now. Uh, shit, what is the name of the book I'm reading right now? Anyway, it's about wild Texas, about the, the wild frontier. It's about uh, the Indians, the Apaches, 
the Comanches, just all the crazy shit that happened here in Texas. And it, it makes you realize like the whole thing about don't mess with Texas is like, Texas was insane after the Civil War. Texas was insane, uh, actually, before the Civil War. Um, just when, like, how big Texas is and how desolate and everything, the Indians ran everything. Like, Texas was kind of falling behind the rest of the country because you literally couldn't handle the Indian problem. And then Native American, sorry. <laughs> canceled listen the point i'm making is that texas there was a time when you literally had to carry a weapon to protect yourselves um and it's some interesting that gun debates are, are a very big thing and they're very touchy because on one side you have people who are worried about mass shootings and stuff like that and you on the other side you have people who are worried about uh, a government getting too much control of its citizens because that's one thing that you've seen throughout history. Literally, you can you can see it how when societies lose complete con or you know they lose a way to protect themselves from their government, governments usually turn tyrannical. Great word usage, but it's true, um, and I think that's what with the Constitution for how long ago it was written. It's a phenomenal piece of paper, all right? It's phenomenal in the sense of how much it is really supposed to protect your liberty. But then you have lobbyists and people who want to manipulate laws and you want people who want to, uh, they're only looking at one side of the coin when it comes to it. And I'm someone who, who looks at things I try at least to look at things from all different angles. And this is one of them where it's like, I'm not, I'm not so hard on one side and so, you know, hard on the other side. I'm just hard. Stupid, stupid. That wasn't even a good one. Don't give me anything for that. Um, but I obviously am in the position of, you know, I have guns. Uh, I have Hunter safety, weapon safety. Um, and it's something that I think is really important. And, and, you know, that's the thing that I believe with liberty and with freedom should also like to quote fucking Spider-Man with, with great power comes great responsibility. And I think in any situation where you have power, you need to be responsible. You need self-accountability. And it goes back to kind of what I was saying about the, the monkey enclosure is that it doesn't start when someone's an adult like that where someone, you know, it starts with being educated when you're young, understanding what you're dealing with, respecting the power that a weapon has, respecting the power that a car has. And, and I think that's one of the things that if we really are going to have constitutional carry and people can don't have to have a permit, <clears throat> or to, to carry a weapon, it needs to be done in a responsible way. I do think it, it, people should have the right uh, to bear arms, obviously. Insert a joke about actual bear arms. Stupid. Um, but I think it's just a, it's a bit of a shock when it just is like, boom, open carry, constitutional carry. Uh, but I think the people that do it you know, you hope that they're going to be responsible. And it's the same thing that I, I always think, I, and I think that will be enforced, is how responsible you have to be with it. Okay, it's not going to be a thing where you can just pull it out. You're in a bar and everything like that. And I don't necessarily think that that's what happens. You kind of look at it and you're like, oh, you think about, oh, everybody's just going to be walking around with a gun and shooting and blah, blah, blah. Listen, Say what you want about Texas. I've had a lot of people try to throw shade when I moved here and saying, you know, even when they went maskless and everything and all oh, stupid Texans are, they have all the freedom just to get us, you know, as much COVID as they want now. The cases are down. We went, I forgot how long it was, two months without a COVID death when we went with the mask off. You got to give credit to Texas, okay? There's people, 
People are getting back to their regular lives. People are going, you know, places. I'm going to the goddamn movie theater on Friday. Life is life is ready, baby. Life is here. Um, but that's also something where people were still responsible. There was no federal enforcement of it, or I mean statewide enforcement of it. People still wore a mask when businesses asked them to, requested. Um, people left to their own devices. When you give people responsibility, they kind of have to do more with it. They understand it, and they, there's a sense of pride with that in community. When you people put people in charge of their own destiny, in charge of their own life, there, there's a certain level of care and respect that comes with it. And I think that's kind of what happened is people, when you're like, yeah, if you want, just be part of the community. We're going to give you the respect to be an individual and to have your freedom, but do it in a way that helps our community and, and know that you're part of it. And, you know, Texan said, say no more, fam. I'll wear my mask. I'll do what I got to do. I won't be a part of the solution. It's when you start taking away people's rights is when I start having an issue with it. The whole thing about stricter gun laws and everything like that, the reason why that never really sits well with me is because it's never a solution. It's never a solution to the actual problem. Whenever you look at these school shootings and these um, mass shootings, super sad, they're terrible. You hate seeing it. Who doesn't hate seeing it? Um, but there's always something they never talk about that, and it's the mental health. And it's the fact that these people were on mental health medication. I think it was a link that like 95% of people who do mass shootings are, are being treated with medication. And they never even want to look at that because it's a, it's a real problem, and it's a much bigger problem. It's like the thing where it, it literally, the gun, the gun restrictions for mass shootings game plan of when they say we need stricter gun laws. It's the same as if in a relationship, a girl is worried about her boyfriend cheating and, and he'll get caught. You know, he, he can't handle temptation. The solution is to make sure that he doesn't follow girls to make sure that, oh, he makes sure he can't get on Instagram. I have to keep him distracted enough so he doesn't go on Instagram and get tempted. That's not a solution. Making it harder for them to actually get to the gun, it's not a solution because they'll find something else. Um, and while that's not the most elegant metaphor, I, I think there is a little bit of something to that. Um, that th we have to fix actual problems at their core rather than being like, oh, we got to take that away from them. We need stricter, you know, this and that which I do think if you have kids in the house and all of that, you got to have things locked up. You need to have it safe. And it's like, I do think there should be a level of accountability for people if guns were uh, taken from the home and they had access to them and they didn't follow the guidelines. That just shows you're not a responsible gun owner and you should pay the consequences for it. And I think when we give people consequences uh, is when we'll actually see changes. But as long as we don't hold people accountable for, you know, gun laws, where if a kid gets his parents a gun or something and it wasn't in a safe or it wasn't, you know, locked up and everything like that, I don't think we're going to see as much change. Um, and obviously that, that was the whole thing is like there's so many guns in circulation and illegal firearms that only criminals and police officers are going to have guns. And that's going to be a very weird situation. Anyway, enough of that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Moving on. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll end it on that one, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I don't know why I said moving on. I knew we were past 30 minutes. If you didn't, if you didn't know by now, I try to have these at least be 30 minutes. Um, but everything's going good here, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, I appreciate every listener that I have. Every single one of them. Listen, the podcast has been growing a little bit. We're trying to always get better and bring you better entertainment, uh, bring you better information. If there's anything, any, any, any input you guys ever have, always feel free to reach out. Anything you liked, feel free to reach out. You know I love you, right? You know you're my only one, right? 
Listen, I love you. I love you. Listen, I love every single one of you. All right? I don't want to overdo it with the effects. All right? I just don't. Choose your fighter. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to tell a friend. Listen, it helps the podcast. We get new listeners. It's amazing. We still have, I can go back in the in the statistics, and we still have people going back and listening to the first episode. I don't even go back and listen to the first episode. Do you know why? Your boy will start sweating. I just start sweating. That's the thing. Once I put something out and it's out there, fairy dust. It just doesn't exist to me anymore, okay? Can't stand it. Your boy starts sweating, cringing. Can't do it, all right? That, that's, that's not me anymore. But thank you for everything, and I will see you guys Monday. And remember, no matter what, I still love you. <laughs>